Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Topo Talk. This geometry was posted on the 3D Modeling Discord. And if you'd like to follow along, just download the Blender file. You'll find the link in the description. And the question was concerning the topology and whether the topology was good topology. And also whether there would be a problem with tension under subdivision. Obviously, you've got a certain mesh density over this side and it's way less dense over this side. So under subdivision, the tension is going to be uneven and obviously that affects texturing. So what I thought we'd do is take a look at how we could improve this geometry and it's not bad geometry, it's all quads, but there's definitely a few things we could do just to even out the tension and also a few knife cuts we could put in there to sharpen up these corners and also a technique for sharpening these corners as well. If we view it under subdivision, you can see, let me just bring it up to two. You can see these corners are rounded and obviously these corners are rounded as well. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments to this. I'm in 3.1. I'm just going to hit K to grab the knife tool. And I'm just going to carry this one through here to keep this straight. I'm just going to hit A and right mouse to continue that and just add that one in there. And I'll just hit A again and just join that one up as well. Space to accept that. I'm going to select those, control X to dissolve. And I'll just slide that one back over there like that. I might just, um, the artist in me wants to just slide this one up as well, like that. It's still bothering me. So obviously you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to hit N and I'm going to use G stretch without spread just to straighten that up. And of course, G stretch is part of loop tools, which you can turn on in your preferences. Let me just straighten this up as well like that. Okay. So what can we do next? Well, let's go ahead and hit control R, roll the mouse wheel, and I'll just add some loops in there. Right mouse button just to center those. Control R again. Add a few in there like that. So we're going for as square as possible for each of these faces. So that's definitely way more even now. We could probably Let's see, get rid of this one, control X. The um, 3D cursor's in the way. I'm just gonna hold down shift right mouse button just to move that out of the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and sharpen this now. And we'll start off with these corners here. So K, right mouse button, like that. And we're gonna just bring one down here, one here, and here, and here. That space bar to accept, just select these ones, and control X. So now if we do a loop cut, you can see it goes all the way around. Let me just zoom out here, first of all. Goes all the way around like that. Now, you might be tempted to do something like this in face mode, just select all and go I to inset and then create the sharpening loop like that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to sharpen up these corners here, then you're going to have to grab the knife and, you know, cut these in and you know, cut an edge in there, select this one like that and you're going to do a limited dissolve and that's going to sharpen that up. That's a pretty long way of doing that. So I'm always looking for better ways. So because we've, because we put those cuts in there and we've created this, the ability to get this nice loop through here, we can just click and drag and just slide that there. And then we can just do another one down here and another one here. So always looking for the most you know, streamlined, optimal approach when you're working with your model. And that's all to do with which step comes first. If you get the steps out of order, then you're going to 
often have to take more steps to do the same thing. And obviously there's more than one way to do things, but I'm always trying to find the fastest possible way to get from A to B. Now, if we just press tab again, now we've got nice sharp, where's my modifier? I've just deleted it, so I'll just add that in again. Now we've got nice sharp corners, so that's looking really nice. I just wanna show you one thing. I'm gonna actually just come back to a previous version. Because we put these sharpening cuts in here, and we, that allowed us to create that loop all the way around through here, we're able to do a loop cut, and that worked really well. But if I tried to do a loop cut without those, you can see how it does that. So it's coming round and it's going all the way through, which makes sense. What if I wanted to create a duplicate edge or clone an edge with the geometry like this? Well, this is where I would use Koshiro's slide edge tool. You can access that if you have it installed by right clicking and it's right down the bottom here, slide edge. I've got mine set to shift alt S. Now once again, this is a paid add-on, something that I suggested Kushido to create and you can see how we can clone an edge out like that. So I could do it that way. You may not have that paid add-on. I will put a link in the description. And then if I want to sharpen up these corners, just coming back in and adding back in those sharpening cuts. So there are different tools and different ways to do things. The trick is finding the right tool and the correct order of steps that gets you there fastest. Slide Edge with the clone is a really useful tool that I used in Cinema 4D and it didn't exist in um, Blender until this add-on was created. There will be situations where doing a loop cut just won't work and that slide clone, slide edge clone technique is really valuable. And I do post those on Twitter occasionally. Okay, so how does that look? Just gotta add that back in again. And we'll just bring it up to two. All right, what do you think? That looks pretty good. It's nice and even, it's all quads and it's nicely sharpened. So I could just select all of this and I'm just going to do that. Turn on on cage and I'm just going to press E to extrude and just extrude that out like that. Oh, uh, two cuts like that, just come to top view. And I'll just scale these out. So I'll go S and Y and just scale those out like that. And let's turn it on cage off at the moment. And now that's a good thing to see. What I've done, because I had on cage turned on. I actually scaled that out too far. So I'm just gonna scale that on the Y and scale it back. So it's not a good idea to actually do things um, to your mesh necessarily, depending on what you're doing, of course, when on cage is turned on. And I'm just going to turn on that cap. And there we go. Nice clean geometry. And obviously you could deform this and everything would look beautiful because it's all quads. And now of course that the geometry is more even, that means there's not gonna be any tension issues and any errors when we do the texturing. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll see you in the next tutorial.